guys, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel. Peggy had a brilliant idea, actually. I was just getting ready to do some more painting and Peggy's like, hey, turn the camera on. I was like, that's, that's a good idea. So I thought I would share this with you guys. So I am going to be working with, I'll give you a little tour of everything I have here so you kind of know what I'm working with. But I'm going to be working with Dana Fox's watercolor with me in the jungle. I am super, super newbie <laughs> to watercoloring so I'm just learning and just playing um, as an example in this book these are just some tests of different techniques that I tried and what's neat about this is that there's like always like an instruction page and then a painting page so I'm going to be working on the first painting in here and it is the hibiscus and so there's instructions on what colors I need and then there's a little sketch and I'm just going to basically follow along with the instructions in the book so um, yeah, let me show you a little bit about my paints, have a sip of my coffee. So, okay, other things here. I'm going to make sure my coffee's not going to be in the way. Okay, so I have two cups of water, one for sort of dipping my brush in when I'm um, cleaning it off or whatever, and then a clean water cup when I need to add water to paints. Um, I've also been painting a little bit this morning, so mine are already pretty damp, but I have a mister and I just like to like mist the paints. I think I learned that, I can't remember where I learned that trick. It's probably Dustin and Modern Metaphysique. Um, and what else? So the paints that I'm using, so this is a set that I found on Amazon. It literally just says pretty excellent. Um, but I'm actually, I think I found out about these from somebody on YouTube that I looked up and they're actually, I guess, kind of decent. I showed them to Dustin and he was like, yeah, those aren't bad. So this is my swatch card. These are the colors that I'm working with in that main set. And then this little set over here is a Paul Rubens set, and these are, oh, it doesn't really say, um, but they're shimmery. So if I want to add a little touch of shimmer, I can go into this one. So that's what that's for. Um, I have three brushes I'm using. These are a number zero uh, for any, like, fine stuff, a number six, yeah, number six, and a number 12 for any like washes and that one needs to get a little bit more rinsed but that's for any backgrounds or whatever so I think I actually might do a kind of blue background on this one I haven't fully decided oh the other thing I have is I have a little oh that's right I was going to show you these are my Paul Rubens shimmeries aren't those pretty um so the other thing I have here is a microfiber cloth this is great for just dabbing my brush on and um I have not as much room on the table because the camera's here I also have an extra little palette this is just one of these little I think I got this at like a dollar store or Michael's or something um it's just a little ceramic one that I use if this one gets full or if I just feel like it I may use this one depending and I think that's it I think that's it all right, so I'm going to take a look at these instructions. I'm probably going to do a background on this page. I think I might have mentioned that already. I'm probably going to put this to music and just kind of hang out. And yeah, we'll see where I end up.
Okay, I'm finally done. So I definitely have a habit of overworking things that I color or apparently in this case paint, but this is my finished hibiscus. I'm just gonna move my paint palette out of the way for a second. And I'm gonna zoom us in, oops, so you can see what I did. Um, I did realize halfway through, look how much my page is curling. I used a lot of water, you guys, so this is not a, a, a comment on the quality of the paper. I went I went very heavy handed. I don't know if you could tell, but I was, I was a maniac. But I did figure out partway through that my page was um, bleeding through the back because it did mark the back of my butterfly page, which is my next piece uh, in this book. But um, I also totally went rogue. I started mixing colors. I started playing. I obviously added some highlight from the metallic to the tips of the hibiscus here. I added some gold, I added some pink, and then I needed to put some in between. So I added a little bit of the orange shimmer. Um, so let's see if I can tilt this in the light some. Hopefully you can pick up some of the reflect that should come through now. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. I'm gonna let this finish drying. I did learn that um, it there was a lot of dry time for this one because each petal was sort of blended individually and if I needed to wait for each sort of one to dry before I went to the other one. And then I kind of got a little crazy and just decided to go with it. So I did that a little bit, but yeah, you can see that I have a tendency to add a little too much paint and water to the page. So I had to like use little Q-tips to suck things up every once in a while when I was like, that's a lot of puddle. And I wasn't sure how it was gonna dry. So I'm still getting used to playing around with the watercolor, but I had a lot of fun doing this and I love the shimmer. Hopefully once the book has been closed for a while, it will re-flatten out because I think that's really pretty. Um, so yeah, I'm pleased. I may actually cut this one out and um, put it in one of my journals or something. I'm not sure. I also today, um, off camera, I also worked in, let's zoom us back out again. I also worked in this um, Watercolor With Me in the Forest, which is the first book from the series that I had. So today I did, where is it? Ah, I did my ladybug. I don't know if I showed this earlier because I can't remember, but this was me playing with the background for the first time. And what I realized was that once I'd done all the red and the black, um, if I'd have tried to bring the background all the way in, it would have smeared really badly. So that's why on this, on the hibiscus, I did the background first and let it dry so that I wouldn't be mixing the colors too much. Although I've definitely noticed with watercolor, even if um, you let it fully dry, it can still reactivate a little bit with water. So you're still risking it a bit. And I don't know if on this one I would have wanted to. I actually kind of like the glow effect in the background. Um, and this is all one shade, whereas in the hibiscus, I tried to do two shades of blue and kind of blend them down. I got, didn't, it didn't really, once it was dry, you can kind of, it only looks like one shade of blue to me. So I can be a little more aggressive with it, I think when I'm doing gradients so that the gradients actually show up, but I'm pretty pleased with that. So while that dries, um, if I'm going to do any more painting, I'll probably flip over to this book because that's what I was doing earlier today. It's just kind of flipping back and forth, which is really fun to do. So my next page, oh, I did start this one earlier. So I'm probably going to finish this page. And um, all I have left to do is basically add more definitions. So I'm going to add some of the dark part of the leaves um, over here. And yeah, so this book, if you're looking for something really super beginner friendly, I will say that these books by Dana Fox are amazing. They're so much fun. Um, and really, it's like the very first one I did. I'll just do a quick flip through the ones I've done already. Um, yeah, they have you do different techniques to kind of test so you can kind of get a feel for it. Um, so this was the very first one I did. I did overwork it a bit um, and it was hard because there was this like crisscross pattern on the top of the acorns, but I'm really pleased with how that one turned out. Um, and I actually marked what colors I swapped out. I got lazy and stopped doing that because these colors don't necessarily fully match what's in my set. So I usually just look for the closest shades. So I'll sometimes hold the swatch card up next to it and go, okay, that's the closest to there. Like that's the closest to there and I'll figure it out, right? Um, so that's my acorns that I did before that I did that like last summer. And then I did this caterpillar. He was really fun um, and super cute. So I did him and this fern, not my favorite. This one was really boring to me to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, and the color I used to kind of do the light green, I didn't like. So it was very like highlighter yellow when it dried. So, but I love how my ladybug turned out. This is another one that I may take out of the book and tuck somewhere or put it into, what I might do actually is cut this out and put it in as a dashboard in one of my journals for next year. That would be a cool thing to do. Yeah. And now it's time to probably play with Clover for a bit. Although I have been painting most of the morning, so I will probably take a little break. But anyways, 
Thank you for hanging out with me while I played with paints and watercolors. Um, another book that I plan to play with in the future is this Splash of Color. This is a painting and coloring book. This one's a lot more kind of generic, but it seems to have pretty heavy duty paper and it opens this way and then it opens this way and you have different designs like this that you can just kind of practice different techniques on or play with, just patterns and things. So this is more like kind of like a generic kind of coloring book. Um, yeah. And then once I fill up both this in the jungle book, um, and actually what I can do here is just take my watercolor piece of cardstock, put it in between. And then while this book is closed, yeah, I think it's mostly dry anyways, but while this book is closed, I like to take these binder clips and just hold the whole book closed like that so that things kind of stay together. Um, but anyways, once I've finished in the jungle and um, in the forest, then I will probably pick up Dana Fox's um, In the Ocean because I really enjoy these. So yeah, but I've got a lot more to do. This one is really chunky. So this one is her first one in the forest is, let's see, this one's 115 pages. Oh my God, I didn't realize there was a lotus in the back. That's really, really exciting. Anyways, so that one's 119 pages, whereas In the Jungle is, I know I already clamped it shut. I'm just curious how many pages this one's like more like 60 pages so it's about like half the size so this one will take me a lot longer to get through than this one um, but they're both fun they both use wet on wet and wet on dry techniques and this one's a little more challenging because when I get um, further on there's going to be little animals and like little fur tricks and things and I don't think even my zero this is my six brush but even my like this is my zero it doesn't seem all that fine to me, so I may need to see if I can find a finer brush for those or just practice more with a light hand because I tend to not be very light-handed. So anyways, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this little like kind of come along with me and watch me paint sort of video. If you wanna see more videos like this, definitely let me know. I also really enjoy doing um, colored pencil work in coloring books. So if you want me to make a video like that and bring you guys along, I'm more than happy to do it. Just let me know in the comments down below. And if you like painting or playing with color or coloring books or anything like that, let me know because I love hearing from other people who nerd out on color and stuff like that. So yeah, I'd be curious to hear from you. So remember to like this video if you enjoyed hanging out with me. Subscribe if you're new here so you can see more random videos on all things witchy, tarot, and apparently color related. <laughs> and definitely, what was the other thing? Let's see, like, subscribe. Oh yeah, click the bell <laughs> if you wanna be notified of my future videos. And remember, if you wanna book a one-on-one -on -one tarot reading with me, you can always do that over at supportivetarot.com. Thank you so, so much and may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye guys.